Solutions for the review mock exam for vector apps. Um, the diagram shows points A, B, and C, which are three vertices of a parallelogram A, B, C, D. The point A has position vector 2, comma 2. And uh, then it says, write down the position vectors of B and C. Um, no graph paper here, but I think we can still figure it out. This looks like it's about negative 1, 7. That look, okay, yeah. C looks like it's about 8 and 9. Okay, um, so we'll put that here. Negative 1, 7, 8, 9. The position vector of point D is D4. Find D. Um, <clears throat> this is a parallelogram. Uh, there's a couple ways you could see this as being a parallelogram. One is maybe like that, right? And the other would be maybe like, um, let's see, this. Those are the two possibilities I can see. Um, they said that the point D is uh, something comma 4, which means the Y coordinate of the fourth um, vertex is at this height. So it can't be that one. It's got to be this one, right? Because that's about at the height of 4. So we're going to erase this. Okay. So uh, D is going to be about here. It's going to be something 4. Okay. Now there's a couple ways um, we can figure out where D is. Uh, let's do it the vector way. Okay. Since this is the vector chapter. So let's see. If we figure out um, if we figure out vector B C then it should be the same as vector AD because it's a it's a parallelogram, right? So let's figure out what BC is. B, vector BC is going to be equal to uh, C uh, minus B. Okay, so we're going to put here uh, C, 8, 9, minus B, negative 1, 7. So we're going to have uh, 8 minus negative 1, which is 9, and then we'll have 9 minus 7, which is 2. Okay, so the vector BC is going to be equal to 9, 2. Now, if we can make vector AD also equal to 9, 2, then that would be a parallelogram because the opposite two sides would have the same direction and the same length. Okay. So, uh, vector AD is the same thing as position vector D minus position vector A. Position vector D we know is D4. And position vector A is 2, 2. So we know that 9 is equal to D minus 2, and 2 is equal to 4 minus 2. So that checks out, right? So how do we make... 9 equal d minus 2. Well, that's just, add 2 to both sides. We get d equals 11. So d is equal to 11. So uh, we can put 11 there. And so uh, the position vector for uh, d is um, 11, 4. Okay, we, we might use that later. Tells us to find now the uh, vector. Uh, BD, which we're going to take the position vector for D and we're going to subtract the position vector for B. So remember D, we just get it from right above there. And then we subtract off position vector for B, which is negative 1, 7. Negative 1, 7. So that will give us 11 minus negative 1, which is 12. And it will give us 4 minus 7, which is negative 3. So that is the vector BD.
Then it says that uh, the line L goes through the points B and D. And it says to write a vector equation for this line in this form. Okay, so um, remember that the velocity vector here, or the direction vector here, is kind of like the slope, okay, or the direction. And we already know that the direction for BD is this, 12, negative 3. Okay, so we can put here 12, negative 3 as M and N. Okay, and then um, the rest of it is just the same. Okay, XY equals negative 1, 7 plus T, 12, negative 3. So this is the vector equation of the line, and we'll just put it inside this little box here. Okay? All right. Then it says, find the value of t at point b. Okay, remember that the point b, the, the position vector of point b is negative 1, 7. Right? Let me show you that again. See, b is negative 1, 7. So, uh, if we put on the left negative 1, 7, and then on the right we have negative 1, 7 plus t times 12, negative 3, then you can see that the value of t to make that true is simply 0. Okay? Next one. Let p be the point 7, 5. By finding the value of t at p, show that p lies on the line L. Okay, so now instead of putting negative 1, 7 on the left, we're going to put 7, 5 on the left. And then we're going to see if we can make this work out. Okay. So, is there a value of t that makes this true? So we got basically 7 equals negative 1 plus 12t. And we also have um, 5 equals 7 minus 3t. Okay, um, let's see. Let's try to solve for t here and then see if we can substitute it in below and get a true statement. So we're going to add 1 to both sides. That will give us 8 equals 12t. We're going to divide 12 by both, uh, we're going to divide both sides by 12 and we're going to get t equals 2 thirds. And then we're going to put it in there and that will give us uh, 5 equals 7 minus 2, because 2 thirds times 3 is 2. And that's a true statement, right? So we're going to put this in the box here. Okay? All right. Show that. Vector CP is perpendicular to BD. CP is perpendicular to BT. Okay, so remember that P was 7, 5. So let's draw that on the picture again. 7, 5. Here's 7. Here's 5. Okay, there we go. 7, 5. So this is uh, point uh, P. And so they said CP, which is uh, this line here, is perpendicular to the red line. Um, let me draw a thicker one here. Okay, so they're saying the orange line is perpendicular to the red line. So to prove that, that it's a hint, whenever they say perpendicular or parallel with vectors, what they want you to do is take the, uh, the scalar product, okay? So first they want to give us, they want to take the, um, the equation for, for CP, which um, is going to be 7, 5, which is P. It's going to be P minus C, right? So the point P is 7, 5, and the point C, let's go back and up and get the variable, the coordinates for C. C is 8, 9. 8, 9. So 8, 9. So CP is equal to 
negative 1, and then the y coordinate would be 5 minus 9, which would be negative 4. And then it says to show that this vector that we just found is perpendicular to BD. BD we grab from up top, it's going to be 12, negative 3. And then uh, whenever they say perpendicular or parallel in, um, in this unit, they're expecting you to use the uh, formula, which is that cosine of theta is equal to vector v, scalar product, vector w, divided by the magnitudes of each of those vectors. Okay? And when the uh, vectors are perpendicular, then cosine of theta is going to be 0. So all you need to do is find the top part. And if you find that's 0, then you don't need to do the rest. Okay? So let's find the scalar product of CPBD and show that the scalar product is 0. And then we'll have shown that these two are perpendicular. So we're going to take the scalar product of negative 1, negative 4, and 12, negative 3. And that will give us um, negative 12. Uh, plus 12, right? So we just found that the scalar product of those two vectors is indeed 0, so that means that they are perpendicular. Okay, so that's the end of uh, the this, this solution.